right, so our next step is to actually create our levels. Now, the question becomes, how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we can actually look at is just adding a tile. Now, if we search up tile, we can find some tiles in our level, uh, or we can just search up shape uh, cube, and this will bring us uh, this little guy. And this is the cube that I'm going to be using, but feel free to, to look through all the objects and see what you want to use. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to use this guy. And what we can do here is make local. And I'm just going to use this as a quick example, because what we can do here is go to the top and hit mesh, create collision shape. And instead of sibling, we'll change this to static body. And instead of try mesh, we'll simply just do a single convex and hit create. And if we zoom in a little bit, we'll be able to see it's a little glitchy, but it's not because anything crazy is happening. It's because there's now a collision shape that perfectly fits the size of the cube. And that's totally fine. We don't see this collision shape when we actually play the game. So if we actually hit play here, we should be able to interact with it if we actually fell on top of it, which most likely seems that we didn't. So instead, first, before we actually continue, let's actually make this two times bigger by scaling it up. So now this should collide with my player. I can even move it to the left a bit. And let's hit play again. And there we go. Now I'm on top of the box. And I can jump on top of it. And you can see that I'm still kind of running away from it. Uh, don't worry too much about the sliding. We're going to fix that uh, near the end of this video or the near, near the end of this part. All right. So our next step is to think, how do we actually create levels? Because we have a cube here and we could duplicate this and then move this over and keep doing that. Uh, and we could do that. Uh, or what we can first do before we actually do that is we're going to take our shape cube here and I'm going to take this uh, save branch as seen. And I'm going to save this into a tiles folder, which I've created previously. And I'll simply name this tile tiles. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, and then inside of here, what we can do is go to scene, export, mesh library, and just type in library. You can save this wherever we'd like. Hit save. And now you may be wondering, well, why did we do that? Why did I just create a mesh library? Well, let me just rename this shape cube to level design, or maybe layout. That might make more sense. And we're going to add something called a grid map. Now, this grid map uses a mesh library that we just created. So the way mesh libraries work is you essentially have a scene of tiles or meshes and things that have meshes and static bodies, and you export it as a mesh library like we just did. Uh, and that is pretty much it. And now you can see we have a library that we can just drag into our mesh library. And there we go. Now, there is a slight problem, which is that let's say I select this and I fill it in with, I believe it should be Z. You may see that things don't really pop up uh, and there is a slight problem or reason. It seems that our library didn't actually get exported properly. Uh, so the way we need to do this is let's add a node here and let's uh, make scene root and then save, and then export one more time, merge, and hit save. All right, so let's uh, delete our old one because it seems like it doesn't not happy with that. So let's export one more time, and there we go. And now let's go to our grid map. Let's just undo that and pop this in. And now we have our shape cube. So now if we try that one more time, we'll see our shapes pop up, but there's gaps in between. Now, there's many ways we can fix this. Either we can go to the cell here, or and we can just reduce this to 111, and that works perfectly fine. So yeah, we can keep the cell at 111, and we can start drawing things. Now, if we hit play, we can actually now see our objects. And just for reference, you can see these little boxes here, and that is because in the debug, I've turned on the visible collision shape. So if you'd like to see that blue uh, area, which is essentially the collision box, then go for it. Um, I turn it on and off a lot of the times when I play my games just to play test. Uh, but yeah, now we can see where we are colliding with the ground and I can fall off here and so on. Now, if we want to make our uh, boxes diff 
double the size again, we can simply transform the actual grid map. Uh, so I'll do that here and just double that size. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much how we would do it. But you may be wondering, well, Omar, but I want to draw upwards, right? This is kind of a platform. How do we kind of start drawing upwards? Well, there's two ways we can get about this. Either when we have our grid map selected, I believe if you hold control and then start scrolling, you can now start drawing up and down. So the default level is at zero, right? So if we start drawing like right here, I fill, you can see that I can start to kind of draw upwards. Now, I don't like doing this and you can see it's kind of awkward at times. And even like, let's go up one more time. It just feels weird. And the process of building a level this way would take a while and it's not very amazing. Uh, so an alternative, let's say, let me just kind of control Z this. An alternative would be to just kind of rotate this. Uh, not, not this one. We will rotate on the X axis. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Uh, so we will rotate this at 90 degrees this way. And now we basically have a platformer. So if we just delete all this, and then we can start drawing our platform. Now, this is a perfectly good way of creating our levels. And you can see how fast and quick this feels immediately and how easy it is. Uh, we can even start just deleting these and start creating a level that we actually like. Right? So now if I hit play, you can see that my character is uh, still kind of falling off. And that is because our characters need to be moved a little bit into the actual box. So let's just move them here. And let's just make sure that they're both kind of on the same level. Yeah, I think that's good. And let's hit play one more time. And we can now see them play. Now, I want to zoom out a little bit. So let's take our camera and just zoom out. And we can check the preview to see what we like and we don't like. And this is good enough. Let's hit close and play one more time. And here we go. We can now have a kind of working platform. This is basically a platformer, 2.5D platformer. And this is totally fine. Making a level like this, there is no problem doing this. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys an alternative. So if you would like to keep this, do not follow these next steps. You can either hide the grid map for now and just come back to it. Uh, or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm just going to delete it uh, as we're going to be using the other method for the rest of this uh, video slash course. So yeah, um, but don't worry. The like process is very, very similar. It's just a matter of placing the cubes. Uh, but let's explore manually placing objects and what the advantages are. So manually placing objects is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to take this cube and literally just duplicate it and manually place it several times. And what we can do here is if I want to duplicate all of these, I can select the first one, hold shift, select the last cube and duplicate and do that one more time. And there we go. And that is how we just manually duplicate these things. So here we can go upwards and just go like this. Uh, and we can duplicate these three and we'll go upwards. Now, I forgot to mention this. If you are wondering how the snap works uh, and why I have snap and you may not, on the top here, there is something called use snap or Y for the quick, to make it quick. Uh, and that is basically how you snap the grids, essentially. Uh, so yeah, that is basically it. Um, I'm going to move everything maybe to the left a little bit. And I want to select these guys. So we can select those two and see these two objects are being selected and just duplicate those one more time. And maybe we'll just delete these guys. And there we go. Now I'll select these and duplicate it. And this is basically the process that I go through when I make games. The reason why this is sometimes preferred over actually using the grid map is because in a lot of games, we don't always use cubes. So I would recommend getting used to this kind of format, not because it's better in this instance, but because it is something that is more common amongst making games in 3D when it comes to making a non-cubic game. So this game is perfect for grid map because we are making a essentially a grid game. Uh, but a lot of games, 
Um, one game I'm working on is called Soul Forge. Uh, it's very similar to Elden Ring, for example. So think of Elden Ring or Dark Souls. These kind of games most likely won't use a grid map. They'll more likely to use things like terrain systems and stuff like that, where it's just more dynamic to actually place objects. So now that we can do this, adding and creating our level is a lot easier. So let's say here, I want to duplicate these guys and pop them up. We'll put it to the left here, to the right. And we'll do that one more time. And we're just going to make some steps. And that is it. This is how we create a very, very small, simple level. And let's lastly just adjust our camera to be in view of this entire level. We can just adjust this as accordingly. And we can just look at the preview on the top right. Or if you'd really like, you can also select this preview and you can see what it'll look like when you actually hit play. Uh, so you can see here, I'm not super happy with the way it looks on the right and left. So we can actually go to the FOV and just increase that just a little bit. And we can just kind of keep playing around with these numbers. And maybe I will zoom this in just a little bit more. And let's hit play and see what this looks like. All right, that's not bad. We now have a very simple platformer with two players that move up and down, except one of them I need to update still. So we'll take a look at that, uh, or I will do that off screen because you guys should have done that for her homework last part. All right, that is it for this part where we have created this uh, level. Now, as a mini challenge to you, uh, I would encourage you to just either remake this level or add to it, either add to it, remake other levels. Basically, just practice either using the grid map, which is what you might use, or manually placing the objects like I was doing. The basic part of this challenge is I'm not going to show you a solution to this. This is just you getting some practice in and actually trying things yourself. So just try it out. Use the grid map. Create your own levels. See what yours looks like. Compare it to mine. Uh, mine is super boring. There's not much going on here. Uh, this is just going to be our tutorial area, so there's not going to be too much. And that is it. In the next part, we'll take a look at exploding boxes, levers, and signals, and creating custom signals and how we're going to do that in our game.